do you ever feel like you just, I don't know, do you just stay stuck in the same place all the time? Not oh, not anymore. Great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So we keep growing, and, um, and we, have, we have places that we need to go, and we're on our way to them, and sometimes we recognize where we, where we want to go, sometimes we need to pause and think about that, and we have all kinds of things, and, and, and so today what I'm going to focus us on is this book, The Big Leap. I'm just curious, how many people before this month, okay, have read this book by Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap? Oh, wow, not as many pe people that are... Raise your hands again. Oh, we got some reading to do, folks. Okay, I read this, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago. And, um, and so, did, so did Petra, and we've been talking about this book. We're actually reading it together, and we're discussing each chapter. So I highly encourage you to get this book today, okay? It's not that big. Um, it's a... It is an incredible book, The Big Leap. And even if you had read it before, what I know for me is I'm like, well, it's like reading it for the first time, and I'm not the person that I was when I read it. Like, my Big Leap now is nothing than my Big Leap was back then. I look at that Big Leap back then and go, okay, but this one's scaring me, <laughs> this Big Leap. So, so he talks about, uh, Gay Hendricks talks about that there are four zones, we have four zones that we can play in. And I would think that um, most of us, at s to some degree, have been living in perhaps three of these zones at one time or another. But I don't know if we're living in the fourth zone yet. I know I'm not. And, and so I want to leap into the fourth. I want to go into this fourth. And and it's important that we look at these zones. Oh, there we go. It's important that we look at these zones. And the fourth zone is the, the zone of our genius. And, and we can choose not to go in there, in that zone, and we can choose to go into that zone. Now, it's important that we, we take a moment to go, okay, what is it? Because... Um, Ernest Holmes tells us that spirit is in every living thing. So it's in every living thing. We get that. We know that. And it's in every soul. And it's latent. And it, just think about that. It's simply waiting. Just think. Spirit's just simply waiting within each of us. Like, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm, when are you gonna, I'm still waiting. To be brought forth to be brought forth and to come through in, in an avenue that only each of us can express. It's waiting for your genius zone, an avenue that only you can express. And how long is spirit going to wait? And it's set, what? I said, long as it takes. Long as it takes. And, and so... It is, it is to bring out the great realities of life. It is to bring out these things called happiness and health and love and power. And it will be supplied as we say and commit to bringing those out. And that's what's going to make our life worthwhile. And so it's like waiting for this. Now, I know that we... I, I bet you've brought some of that out so far, yes? Good. But it's still waiting for more to be brought out and perhaps some different things. Because there's no limit to what can come through us unless we believe that there is. But there truly is no limit to what... You know, there, and it doesn't matter our age, it doesn't matter our experience, it doesn't matter our circumstance, it doesn't matter where we've come from, it doesn't matter where we are right now, there's actually no limit to what can come forth through us, this divine urge that is in each of us that's really seeking to be expressed fully, full out, right? The challenge is, at least for me, 
The challenge is we tend to limit it. And what um, Gay Hendricks is talking about in this entire book is we tend to have an upper limit. Some might call it the glass ceiling, okay, if you think of workplace, but we all tend to have an upper limit. And we've had it throughout our years. That upper limit keeps changing. But there can come a time where we're just so comfortable where we are that we're not willing to go and break through that upper limit. He tells us that, he talks about us. He says, our species, y'all know who we are. Our species in general had grown accustomed to pain and adversity through millennia of struggles. We knew how to feel bad. We've had millions of nerve con connections devoted to registering pain. Okay, that served us. Ow! It serves us. We have all these nerve endings and connections that will register pain, right? And we've had a huge expanse of territory in the center of our bodies dedicated to feeling fear. Have y'all ever felt fear? Once or twice. Certainly, we've had pleasure points in various places. I'm not going there. I'm reading. Certainly, we've had pleasure points in various places too, but where were the mechanisms for ongoing, natural, good feeling? Ongoing, natural, good feeling. He says, I realize that we were only recently evolving the ability to let ourselves feel good. And here's the clincher. Have things go well for any significant period of time. Ooh. Uh-oh. So, so if we look at our history, yes, there's all kinds of pains and struggles and things and the race consciousness and it, you know, we've had a lot of that. And have you ever had moments in your life where you've said, oh my gosh, it feels so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop or whatever. You see, you see, you see. Okay. I went to elementary school outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And I went to college in Memphis, Tennessee. I think those schools in Tennessee didn't really have it going on. Because I bet you took a class in your school. It wasn't offered to me. But I bet either in elementary, junior high, high school, or college, I bet you were offered a class called How to Tolerate Longer Periods of Success and Good Feeling. <laughs> I knew you were given that class, and you took that class. And I wasn't. Y'all didn't get that class either? See, we're not given how, we're not taking classes on how to tolerate. Isn't that an interesting word? But tolerate longer periods of success and good feeling. We're going to focus on that with this book, if you choose to read it too, and to take this up. So ask yourself, I just want you to ask yourself in this moment, I'm going to give some questions in your voice. I know. <laughs> Nasally southern voice right now. Can I allow, this is for you to ask yourself, can I allow things to go well in my life all the time? 
Oh, good. Some of y'all have been studying this. Am I willing to increase the amount of time every day that I feel good inside? Yes. Okay. That's not universal in the room. That's okay. Right? We got to, like, I really seriously want you to ask yourself this. And it's, when I say feel good, it's like he talks about it. It's this natural sense of well-being that's not dependent on outside factors. Can one feel good on the inside no matter what's going on out here? And can we expand that time in this day? Good. All right. Cool. Y'all are ahead of me. Am I willing to increase the amount of time that my whole life goes well? Yes. See, you know, the whole life. Have you ever, like, relationship great, work sort of not? Relationship opposite, work great, relationship not, you know, whole life. Work, relationship good, health not. You know, the whole life. There's no, like, tatunka on the tire whole life. Yeah, he's asking really important questions for us to ask ourselves in these, in in this book. Am I willing to feel good and have my life go well all the time? Or am I getting in my own way? Yes. Yes. So the question then comes, how do you limit yourself, right? And are you even aware at the times that you're limiting yourself that you're limiting yourself? Well, <clears throat> he talks about this too. He says, each of us has an inner thermostat setting that determines how much love, success, and creativity we allow ourselves to enjoy. When we've exceeded our inner thermostat setting, we will often do something to sabotage ourselves. Okay, you know, it's pretty something, don't you think, that I'm standing here talking about this? I continue, I'm just being real. (laughs) We each have an inner thermostat setting that determines how much love, success, and creativity we allow ourselves to enjoy. When we exceed our inner thermostat setting, we will often do something to sabotage ourselves, causing us to drop back into the old familiar zone where we feel secure. It's a zone in which we actually feel secure. And we each have an upper limit. And and it's really good to understand and become aware of, "Uh uh-oh, I feel this upper limit. It's right here. And am I willing to move through and pass this upper limit? Because life itself, spirit, that which is innate as each of us, that moves through and as us, does not have a limit. So are we limiting it? Right? He says, unfortunately, our thermostat setting usually gets programmed in early childhood before we can think for ourselves. We've got to reprogram this setting, this limit. And we need to expand the settings. We can expand these settings. It's important for us to be willing and wanting to expand these settings. And Gay Hendrick shares with us in this brilliant book, The Big Big Leap, he says that we can expand them in small increments each time you consciously let yourself enjoy something. So today, like, consciously enjoy the money you currently have. We tend to go, oh, 
what I don't have. I'm not quite there yet, and we're not taking, I'll speak for me. And am I taking time to enjoy what I do have, right? The money I have, the love you feel. <clears throat> the creativity expressing in your world as you. And so as we take time to expand this capacity of our own enjoyment, that enjoyment, that capacity expands. And when that expands, guess what happens? So within, so without. So as I take time to enjoy the love that I feel. Now, we do all kinds of funny things. I watched myself over these past six weeks. I got called on it a time or two. I'm pacing on my good foot. <laughs> but there was so much love coming my way through service and offerings of rides and meals and so much love. You know, every time Petra would just go get a teacup for me or whatever, whatever. But I, I now know I was deflecting some of it instead of feeling that love. And then, if I'm not feeling the love right there in that moment, and I'm deflecting it, then my thermostat, my capacity is not expanding. Therefore, the love is not expanding. Because if I'm not feeling it within, it's not happening without. It's a tricky thing. We sometimes think we have to get it out here to feel it in here. But when we take time to expand our capacity within ourselves to enjoy the money that we have, the love that is right here, you know, the creativity that's expressing, then that grows, which means outside that grows, which means, you get it, the inside grows. But we have to take time to expand that capacity and place our attention. So I just, I wonder, I'm just going to take a minute. We're going we're gonna to expand this. We're going to start it right now. We're going to expand this capacity, this upper limit. Just go within. I invite you to go within. And I want you for a moment to focus on what feels good inside of you right now. Place your full attention on it. And as long as I let you, I want you to feel it as long as you can. All right, I invite you to come back. Could you feel it, what you were focusing on? Could you feel it on the inside of you? Yeah. One or two people, just shout out, what was that like? Heart expanding. Heart expanding. Peaceful, peace and calm. Peace and calm. Elevating. Elevating. Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Gratitude. Gratitude. Basking in the light. Awareness, safety. safety. Are those good feelings? How about each day? I mean, we, I know that there are a lot of things to focus on each day, but let's, for this season right now, this month, we're focusing on that which feels good inside of us. We're focusing on that love that we feel. We're focusing on the money that we have. We're focusing on the creativity and the ideas and the thoughts that are coming through us. We're focusing on that so that we can start to expand bit by bit, day by day. Now, I've, I've had a different kind of practice, but now I can use that practice and put it into this practice because we get comfortable, I do, I'll just speak for myself. We get comfortable where we are in these zones. 
But right now, I'm having, so there was a place where I got really comfortable in this recovering from broken ankle, right? And surgery. And it was like, I'm so comfortable because guess what? There was no pain. There was no pain when the ankle was just not able to be moved. After a while, I got to the no pain zone. What if I stayed there? What if I stayed in this boot? Cute that it is. For the rest of my life. Because there's no pain right now. Now I'm going to physical therapy. So funny that they call, they call that pain and torture, PT. Don't they? Anybody been through PT? Oh, look at us. Did you, did you just say no? I'm not going to PT. Right? And so what are they doing? Little by little and little bitty steps, they're making me what? Expand my capacity for what? Greater movement, greater stability, right? And I'm like, I have to be not resistant to it. I have to say, okay, let's go for it. Because I want to get in the back the genius of moving, this is, this is really how it works. So I have to like, oh, now, so now it's so great. I don't have crutches, but for the past two days, I have so much new pain. It's not even funny. And I could have just said, yeah, but that was easy. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, but there's pain going on in my foot right now. But I, I can welcome it because I want to go beyond where I am right now. And that's what Gay Hendricks is talking to us about. He says that the goal in life is not to attain some imaginary ideal. It is to find and fully use our own gifts. We've got to fully use them. We must find them. So we're, we're, we're starting today. Next week, Reverend Cynthia James is really going to help us find our purpose. But we have to find them, and we have to fully use our gifts. And so, in order to fully use our gifts, we must be what? Willing to move out of our comfort zone. That's it. We've got to be willing to move out of our comfort zone. So there are four zones. I'm not going to go into them much because I want you to read the book with me. There are four zones. There's the zone in incompetence. Never done that. <laughs> okay, but it may not be what you think. There's a zone of incompetence. He gives a beautiful example. These are all the activities that you're actually not good at. So... Um, he gives an example of this CEO that has to install this printer. <laughs> Anybody try to do that before? And I, imagine, and, and he's like a CEO and a coach, and he gets paid quite a bit by the hour. But he decides, I'm going to install my own printer. Eight hours later, <laughs> he gets her done. Four hours on tech support. This guy was not good at that. He was incompetent in installing a printer. What, so sometimes we do things that actually we're not good at, and we don't need to be good at it. You could call someone. He would have spent less money. If you think about eight hours of his time, he would have spent less money to hire someone to come out to install the printer and move on. And we do that a lot, don't we? Okay, so this is, it doesn't mean you're incompetent at everything. It's what you choose to do. Where is your zone? Which zone are you in? And so we don't want to be in the zone of incompetence. I would not attempt to fix the HVAC if it were. It's not going to, but we're to go out here, right? So that's the zone of incompetence. Then there's the zone of competence. How many people have been in the zone of competence? Okay, y'all, much more of y'all are willing to admit that one. <laughs> All right, so the zone of competence are things that you're competent at, as are other people. Okay, so there, um, but 
so all these people around you can do it just as well. So I'm competent at PowerPoint, but there are a lot of other people that are competent at PowerPoint. I'm telling on myself again. There are other people that are around here that are competent at PowerPoint as well. But what if I say I'm going to spend my time on PowerPoint? You get it? I'm not in my zone of genius. Now, we all have to do this, because then guess what? There are other people that are competent at PowerPoint, and maybe that person doesn't need to do that either. We need to find someone else that's competent that wants to do that in service, you see? And it doesn't mean that we're, you know, we can do this. How many people feel they are very competent at a lot of things? Okay, not just me. But do we choose to spend our time in all of those things? So we've got to stretch ourselves. So that's the second zone. The third zone is the zone of excellence. The zone of excellence. These are activities that you do extremely well and you make a good living at it. How many people are in their zone of excellence? Okay. So far, everybody else must be in the zone of genius. I don't know. We've got, but yes, yeah, so, so these zones. So I bet a lot of us right now are in the zone of excellence. Things that we're extremely good at and we're making a good living at it. The thing is, Gay Hendricks talks about that this is very seductive and it's a dangerous trap. Because there is that which is within us that still has this urge. Like, if you're doing what you do, but you're not singing a song every day at work, <clears throat> and there are things that you could do with your eyes closed, because you're, you're good at it, and you do it every day, but there's some divine urge inside of you that's still calling you out, and you're just going, yeah, but mm -mm, I'm good at this, and I'm making a good living. He's saying that is seductive, and that is a dangerous trap to allow the zone of genius to come forward. And then the zone of genius is... You have a zone of genius, and these are activities that only you are uniquely suited to do. This zone, your zone of genius, beckons you, he says, with increasingly strong calls as you go through life. Do you know what that one is? Has it been nagging at you for a while? Mm-hmm. That's that zone of genius. And it's time, or perhaps it's not. We each get to choose, are we willing to commit, as scary as it might be, because this is not a comfort zone. Are we willing to move into our zone of genius? <clears throat> and here it is, right here, the instant the insistent, universal desire for self-expression is the divine urge within each of us. It is there. It's been there all along. We're just hearing it. And over time, we keep feeling it. And, and it's like spirit itself is like tapping at the wall. So I can't do this inside. But imagine, I'm inside on the walls of my heart tapping. You feel it? It's on the walls of your heart. And it's tapping. And it's urging each of us to this fuller life. It's our zone of genius. And it's probably been tapping for a while. And it's scary. Petra and I are talking about this. Right now, we're dedicated. We've been in the zone of excellence these past few years doing ministry together. We're playing to our strengths. Are we willing to step into the zone of genius? Our genius zone. But it's urging us. It's urging us from within ourselves. It's the whole of life. Think of it. The whole of life is urging us to do this.
So one of the things that he talks about, which is very powerful, which I'm not going to talk about because you're going to buy the book, is he talks about four fears and he talks about four related false beliefs within these four fears. There are four fears and four related false beliefs that hold our upper limit in place, keeps it here. And he says that everybody that he's ever coached and everybody he's ever met has at least one of them. We may have perhaps two or three of them. The good news is he hasn't met anybody that has all four. So you don't have to be that afraid, right? But they are these powerful. And I, but by reading this book now, I know what mine is. Petra knows what hers is. It's different than mine. And so we can help one another move through these. But we have them. Have you gotten to a place where you can almost sleepwalk through doing all the things that keep you successful? If you are there at that place and you are willing to move beyond this comfort zone and commit, you can step into your zone of genius. Think of this. If it weren't for blank, see if you've ever said this to yourself or said it to someone else. If it weren't for blank, I could be doing what I really want to do. If it weren't for blank, I could be doing what I really want to do. Most of us actually have a well-justified story that's embedded in us and it's been there and we've told ourselves on why we can't take our big leap. We got a few stories maybe. Well, I can't take it because of. Well, I can't take it because of, right? There are these stories, okay? So we're incrementally wanting to move this stuff out of the way, not let it hold us at our upper limit because all of life, spirit is urging and wanting this to come out that only can come out through you. Not through me, through you. And so when we're in our zone of genius, um, he says, um, it doesn't feel like you're, you're working. It doesn't feel like um, you're doing any kind of work at all. And have you ever noticed, if you've been there a little bit, that time feels completely different? Like you're not working. Like, you know, I know. It's like, I have those moments. I don't feel like I've ever worked here. And time does stop. There's a beautiful thing in this book that I want us all to practice. Because of our teaching, Science of Mind, we know how truthful this is. He calls it Einstein time. Mm, it's juicy. And now I'm starting to practice Einstein time. And we can control it. And we can call in Einstein time. I want you to look at this and read this and know what Einstein time is. I can't cover this whole book in a few minutes, right? But Einstein time. And when we're in Einstein time, all things change. See, we think it's so linear. No, we can bring Einstein time into our life. So there are questions in this book. He helps us. But there's this divine urge that is telling us now. It's never too late unless you're going to use that as your upper limit thing. Because I'm too old, I can't do what I love to do. What is that? 93-year-old woman that became a bodybuilder and now she's winning all these awards? Competition, it doesn't matter, right? You, one can limit themselves and say, well, I'm too young. Because I'm too young. Because I don't have experience. Because, be, right? But we can change this. And I'm inviting us all to do this each day. Each day to keep expanding. What is it that we enjoy right now inside of us? What's your real superpower? 
That's what I call it. What's your real superpower? I want you, when you know what it is, I want you to tell me. So I can keep calling out your superpower. I can say, I don't see your, come on, how can we help? Call out this superpower. Speaking, Speaking. okay. Oh, y'all want to call it out? Okay, <laughs> go for it. What was that one? Connecting. Connecting. Yeah, we each have a superpower. I suspect more than one, right? I remember years ago when I started uh, speaking, that was Einstein time. But goodness knows when I was a freshman in college and I took this course, I just want you to know, they did offer this course in Memphis at college, public speaking. I took that course and we had to write five minute speech on anything we wanted and deliver that. That was our first assignment when I started that course. Week one, you gotta write something and speak about it. Do you know that that night before when I started trying to write down something I was gonna write on racquetball because I was also taking that course at the same time. I couldn't sleep, I threw up several times that night I was so sick, I didn't fall asleep. I went the next morning, and instead of going in that class and giving that five-minute talk on racquetball, I dropped the course. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you come from. That divine urge is here. It's been here. You exist, Ernest Holmes tells us. You exist. So that the divine feeling, that fire, that imagination and creativity may be expressed through you. And it can only be expressed that way, specifically, through you. He continues and says that the Spirit comes to you with a new and fresh creativity from the moment you took your first breath. Spirit came to you, through you, and as you with a new and fresh creativity. You need not ask what others have done and how they have done it. Be yourself and express life as you find it. He tells us to never imitate be you as only you can and let that life that's urging to express. And we just have to commit. We have to commit that we are willing to move into this zone, this genius zone. It's not going to be comfortable. I'll tell you that right up front. I'm moving into it right with you. But we first have to commit that we're willing to move into it, to expand from the upper limit. We've got it. I just experienced that. Peter and I just experienced that. I remember saying this summer, oh my gosh, life is so good. I can't imagine it getting any better. And the first day of my vacation, what did I do? A vacation that I'd been dreaming about for years. I think there's something to that. So I'm committing to step into my genius zone, and I want you to commit and step into yours with me. Let's don't limit this grand and glorious call that's within each of us. I'm going to ask God to come up, and I'm going to end with a poem from Ernest Holmes that so speaks to all of this, to call it forward and to call it out in this moment collectively, because together we can help each other not stay at the same temperature. It's time to move into our genius zone. So I invite us to go within and just let these words sink into you. It's called the call. This I saw 
or else some greater presence made it known to thee. The universe is filled with life, the earth, the sky, the sea. And teemed with intelligence, with majesty and might, deep within me, some subtle inner sight beholds and sees, comprehends and knows the all. No fears, no falters, but answers. But answers the divine call. To be as one beyond the bounds of time and space to overcome the bondage of the human race and to leap with trust undaunted and free and to the depths of that infinite sea whose waters calm are ready to receive those who in simple faith believe. Believe. Say within yourself, with all you've got, I believe. Shout it from the rooftops within your inner self, I believe. I believe. I came here to be in my zone of genius. And so it is.